Hello again, everybody. I have a lot of things to do today once I get to Riften. To first, I need to get away from this bard. A somewhat special a bard, actually. If you'd like to hear something, it only costs five gold. That's so sweet of you. I'll tell you what. I'll play a special song just for you, for no charge at all. This song is an Easter egg. It's based on a, uh, it's a song from the Elders Arena, the first game in this entire series. They made a card based on her, actually, for uh, the Elder Scrolls Legends. Not a very good one, but at least it's high rarity, so it sells her a bunch of soul gems. She has a, a moderately important backstory, I guess, in this game. She's on the run from the Blackbriars back in Riften due to some shenanigans there. Alright, well, speaking of Riften, you guys have seen me take this route before. It's a fairly dangerous one with lots of wildlife along, but I'm better equipped now than I was before. Which is good, because there's more dangerous wildlife than there was before. Muffle first, tech life out too, hopefully I should be able to get the drop on the animals instead of the other way around. And while I'm walking, this is a good time to talk about some game mechanics, I suppose. I think I'll go over resistances this time. They're fairly straightforward, but very important, and I often see people making big mistakes with them. So, the way things like resist fire, resist frost, etc. work in this game is kind of as follows. First of all, if you have two sources of the same kind of resistance, like, uh, say, boots of 25% fire resistance and, like, a ne necklace of 25% fire resistance, they stack up linearly, so you get 50% fire resistance. Now, of course, if you know any math at all, it'll immediately be clear to you that that means that... Ah, uh, that looks like a thief over there. Maybe a little summon to the ball. Maybe an assassin. Either way, I'm ready for him now. All right, hunt over your oh, dark elf one. or I'll gut you like a fish. <laughs> nice. I'm not going to ask again. Woo! All right, so I better equip frost here, probably. I spike. Oh, away from me. So resist that Atronach, so this could be a somewhat long fight. Oop, I've aggroed something else over there, too. Need to watch out for this. Is that a bandit getting involved in this? Alright, whatever. Mostly got them now. Okay. Is the other person gonna get involved or not? If not, I'll just move on. But I don't want to be running around with low mana in this dangerous room. So, that Dark Elf had, of course, 50% uh, fire resistance to begin with. This leads me to my next point, which is that if you have a bunch of resistance already, then more of it is more beneficial to you than usual. Like, let's say you had 0% to begin with, and you got 25% more. Well, you're functionally like 33% tougher against whatever the thing is. Oh, whoa! Not the shot I should have been using. That was a bad reflex there. Oh, no, you don't! Fight it! Definitely should have had Kind's piece ready for that, but I wasn't expecting it to be there. I thought it'd be a bandit behind me. All right. Well, two of us together can probably bring it down. Me alone with just Natronaki would be a very long, obnoxious fight, and I might not win. I'll have Kind's piece ready just in case of any kind of trouble. Is the Dark Elf going to help, or is he just... I guess the Atronach's in the way. It will kill my Atronach pretty fast. Damage that is enormous. The points are very high, too, as you can see. Almost got it. A little more. There we go. Bears never really have anything valuable on them either. Yeah, we last saw him actually near it. Now he's just in a totally wrong location. Anyway, so as I was trying to say, if you already have some resistance, then getting more of it helps you a lot. Like if you had like the Dark Elves 50% in the beginning, and then you got 25% more, that would basically double your hit points against that thing from there. 
But there's a limit to this, as you would expect. That limit is for the player 85%. Oh, wow. Okay, you know what? I'm going to just close in there. Kill off that wolf. And then I'm going to use Kind's piece on this guy. And off I go. The nice thing about bears is they will warn you before attacking with their little roar. Frostless better up there. Okay. But I need to get my mana recharged before the time I get back to that location, I guess. So. The limit for the player, but not for the enemies, is 85%. So if you have things that stack you above 85%, they do not help. So things like, say, a vampire is 100% poison resistance, for the player it's only 85%. For the enemies, it's truly 100%. 85% is still pretty good, though. Like, even on Legendary with, like, a uh, you know, triple damage multiplier that you're taking, that's still, you know, you're basically having the damage you would take. So good stuff. Not too huge and too tough, so that's alright. What have you got for me? Gold. Let's eat some poor trap. Now, the other thing to note is that if you have two resistances of different kinds that apply to the same effect, like for example, you hit with a fireball, but you have both resist fire and resist magic, those resistances stack multiplicatively. So if you had 50%, 50% fire resistance and resist magic, you would take 25% damage from that attack. So if you already have a bunch of resist magic, then getting some resist fire has the same multiplier effect on your hit points as it usually would if you had no resist magic, but it's less important because it won't really be saving you from instant kills or anything at that point. So of course one of the implications of this is that you shouldn't have just like a few small resistances, you shouldn't have like you know 25% of each, you should instead focus and just maximize your resistance to one or two of them. If you have to just pick one, you obviously want that to be resist magic, but if you have a second one, resist ice is probably the way to go, definitely for a warrior character, for mage, fire, or ice. Shock is worthless for everybody. It's just so rare, not worth bothering with. So as a Nord, you know, you can basically pick up like one Frost Resistance item and hit the 85% pretty easily. Then you can just easily max out your Resist Magic or Resist Fire from there and be pretty tough against everything. Now, as a reminder, I have said this before, Absorb Magic does not work the same way. It's not a percent reduction of all damage the way those other ones are. Instead, it's a percent chance of negating all damage from a spell and absorbing all of the ma magic from it. But of course, the same you know, mathematical principle still basically applies to what you want to do with that. That one actually can go up to 100%, as you have I'm seen. I'm on my way to Solitude to join the Legion. A united empire is better for everyone. This uh, ruin up there is a moderately useful one, I believe. The shout you get from that is Animal Allegiance, which is actually kind of like one step better than Kind's Peace, but I believe is a single target, whereas Kind's Peace is area, which when a bear is charging right down at you is probably more important. Little mill over there. There's a mill around here that has a small quest to it. Cross quest better over there. Alright. Anyway, Shalky has no reason to go to that ruin, so I'm not going to. And I already have, you know, time space is good enough for my purposes, so I don't really need any animal regions. Alright. Another one down. Really, the trip has not been so bad. I expected to fight more Saber Cats, which are more dangerous than bears because they give you no warning before attacking. And they deal higher damage, too. Although it's a slight difference. They are much less tough, so like, if you see a Saber Cat coming, you do have a chance to kill it at least, whereas with a bear, like, you have no chance to amazing, unless you have vastly higher magic than that guy. Amethyst, huh? This is that orc stronghold. I believe I'm now high enough level to get that quest if I wanted to, where you get a Volan drum. Uh, Two handed. Another one? Ah. I'm stuck up there now. The aftermath's not even helping. There we go. Nope. I could do kind speech on these guys, but I don't really want to leave them behind me. And it shouldn't be too tough to kill my adjunct and just hit the darn thing. Oh, here it comes, okay. That's a knock. Kind of need to actually do your job now. Mm 
There we go. What pests they are. Something else ahead? Oh, it's probably just like a rabbit or a fox. It's that small. Anyway, yeah, so Volendring is a very powerful two handed weapon. I'm not doing two handed weapons, of course. They're probably fighting the giant out front there. No? How odd. Typically, will be. She's fighting something, I just can't see it, I guess. Weird. Oh, there it is. Okay, well, I'm not going to get involved with that nonsense. Anyway, it has decent stats, and more importantly, its magical effect is that it steals stamina, which lets you power or attack endlessly, which is basically an instant you know, guaranteed kill of anything that can be stun locked. Very boring, but very effective way of fighting. I don't know what I've aggroed over there, I don't particularly want to find out. So I'll just keep moving along, and hopefully I can outpace it. It's not a very good quest. They said you have to find a Daedra Heart for one thing, and give you this like snotty, obnoxious line when you ask where to find one. This is not Oblivion anymore, they're not actually easy to find. But, luckily I've got one. Wolves, I think, or maybe deer. Sometimes it's hard to tell unless you can actually see them. The shape of the tech life is too similar. That standing stone up there is the Shadow Stone, which is turned invisible once per day. So, like most standing stones that give you once per day power, is pretty worthless. Especially because invisibility turns off the instant you do anything important, like interact with an item or attack somebody. So you can't really use it to get away with much. Not much once per day, anyway. Well, this back entrance direction was closed to me before, but now it's accessible. Now that I've... Well, I haven't really discovered this farm anyway, I guess I need to step a little bit off the path. I thought that was important. Just thought it was odd to have that undiscovered location so close to the path. Anyway, so this now the uh, scam at the front door is over with, they allow you in the back door. There are several side entrances to Riften too, it should be obvious from the dock he's sending out there. Although the uh, most obvious entrance does not actually work. The canal itself is blocked off with an invisible wall and you cannot get in that way. Doesn't make a whole lot of sense, but whatever. <clears throat> So a lot of things to do in this area. First of all, just basic town stuff. I should buy and sell things, see if anybody has any good artifacts for me. But then I have a whole bunch of quest lines to advance. For one thing, the Dark Brotherhood won. I will be doing that, but not until I can come back with a way to hide myself and not be caught. Let me put my hand out of Xenathar. See if I can find a beggar around here. Yeah, these are too hard to find. There we go. Oh, I'm still trying to scam everybody. Divines bless your kind. I've anything you wish to sell? Just what you see here. Anything good here? No, no, definitely not. He uses a pretty terrible inventory. Some very valuable miscellaneous items, but whatever. I don't have too much stuff, so I'm not gonna be too picky about who I sell what stuff to. I'll just offload all this, and I won't really need to worry about running out of uh, merchant money. Yeah, sell that too. There we go. Keep your eyes to the road. Broca, you got You're anything? Buy just what you see here. Hmm, too low a percent to really be worthwhile. You should not settle for less than like 40%, probably, I would say. You can get that pretty easily at pretty low level. Anything I can sell you. Yeah, how about those, and the that I don't need, and these. I have a whole bunch of potions I took from the Greybeards, I suppose. Anything here that I can offload? That, and that. Amethyst, bear pelts. You can sell those to Smiths usually, or you can use them to make your own, uh, leather. I do like that you can do the entire supply chain, basically, of, uh, smithing. It doesn't make that much sense, although they've streamlined it, but I do appreciate that it's in the game, at least. That'll Come do. back when you're ready to spend more gold. This guy can have some natural jewelry from time to time. Greetings His inventory is usually pretty poor. See for we'll yourself. See. Health? No, that's that's pretty worthless. Safe travels, Landstrider. Blacksmith, you get anything? Come to see Hmm. Blades, helmets, pretty much anything to suit your needs. No, that's that's pretty worthless. Anything here? Nope. Okay. 
I'll just buy your iron ore and be done if you with need it. any more smithing work come see me again Blackbriar meter and notice has an interest in here also has an interest outside of town welcome to the pond prong fancy robe trinkets odds and ends that sort of thing no I already have these of course lock picking again it's easy to find that stuff not destruction. That's what I'm checking for, really. I mean, a few other things. He'll sell me Eider cheese wheels. You, sir, are a hero among merchants. All right. Well, what do I have that I can still sell? Some potions of regeneration, I guess. Not too much else really left. I have a lot of potions of various kinds here. I guess I could sell those books, but. You let me before I forget I... about actually, and you can see he actually sold the ones off the shelf, so they vanish. Let me actually learn this book here, because I've been putting it off for too long. There we go. Not that I'll be using that much, but I may as well just learn it now. Alright, that covers most of the important merchants, really. Nobody else will have any kind of useful gear for me. I guess the court mage conceivably could, but very low odds. So, off to the Temple of Mara here. Advance that Mara quest line that I did by talking to this, uh, Two lovers in Iverstead. They'll send me off to a couple more locations before Blessings it's done. Mara upon you. Lady Mara bids you welcome. How wonderful. Like the sea, their love roils and swells, but brings life and nourishment to I feel like this nut everywhere would be better if they lived in a place that wasn't, like, hundreds of miles from the ocean, but whatever. I see you are eager to carry the light. Also, does this face look creepy to As anybody you venture, else? Mara fills my mind ever more with visions of love in peril. Embers lie nestled in stone, needing only fuel to bloom a flame that will warm all around them. Go to Markarth. There you'll find Kalsomo, wise, acid, and reclusive. He's not really acid. Help him to emerge and state his intentions. This is the prayer heard by the goddess and relayed to her servants. Markarth is a pretty cool city, but it's very far away, so won't be going there anytime soon. Marmal here is the one you can learn about uh, marriage from, I believe. And this is the place where you do get married. Which has many benefits, actually. Uh, especially if your spouse is a follower and you should not settle for less than that. Besides, obviously, being a, a follower, which I will not be using, but it's useful, I'll admit. Uh, they have other kind of benefits, like if you sleep near them, you get 15% faster skill increases, which is good if you're trying to you know, raise up your skills. Although I usually recommend against doing that willy nilly. They also once been able to cook a home cooked meal for you, which is a pretty powerful food item. My skill in battle is unmatched. If you've Fortunately, got the coin, true. take a look. Let's see what you've got. Ale, you can use that. And you won't sell me anything else of value here. Fine, fine. Come back and see us again. Maybe I'll take a seat here and just... Hey, Taylor. Lunch. Get off your lazy tail and take care of the customer. You've been in Rifkin Keep your for quite scales some time on. now. Never heard that dialogue before. That I really kind of detracts from their romance. You want a drink? Riften has problems of its own. Now if you'll excuse me, I have other things. He says he has other things to do besides doing his job here. Whatever. It's like I called him over. Well, honey nut treat and some grilled chicken and green apple and some Nord mead sounds good to me. To. I'm relieved to hear you say that. If you were to leave, I'd miss you terribly. Erin, I owe you my Why hire a common soldier to It would take you a threat to all of Skyrim for me to pay. Where is there? I presume you're bothering me for a good reason. I'm not bothering you, yeah. just walking past. What's your problem? My well, problem is only now found where the cellar was. Lord. If I can interest you in one of our special drinks, you let me know. They've already sent assassins after me for robbing from them, you know, before, so this is my way of showing them that I really do not care and consider myself above their petty assassination attempts. But out I go. Well stocked now. It would be a little bit much even for me to actually go and cook new Elsa Fondue right after I stole that stuff. I'd rather skip town, I think. And head out to the Dawn Guards, because they are nearby here too. Sort of. They are pretty darn remote, which is one really obnoxious thing about their questline, if you're not doing fast traveling. 
Let me turn on that quest mark if I haven't already. John Guard. And if you don't have the unofficial patch installed, the quest markers can mislead you very badly. So uh, be aware of that. I better probably equip my illusion spells for the same reason as before. Oop. This deer isn't running from anything in particular. Friendly over there might be hunting it. We'll see. Hmm. You won't get away. You won't get away. I've only met these guys once or twice before. I forget if they have any kind of story to them. I think I encountered them once near the uh, Malakath Grove where do the Volundrung quest, so maybe they're associated with that. Yes. Something running down there. So the Dawnguard are very remote, and they make it kind of go to their remote fortress again and again and again and again and again. Which is just tedious after a while. Especially because you also need to go to the exact opposite end of Skyrim for the other half of that quest, again and again and again and again. So, lots of time wasting stuff there. Hostiles. Bandits that looks of things. Oops. There we go. Well, just deal with this nuisance. Wow, he really flew, huh? Chest. There! Not the fox the way I thought. Another one, huh? How did they sneak up in there? I was going to detect life. Alright. Well, I'll just need to wait for it to get up here, I guess. Can we manage the stairs? Alright. There we go. Come on. I didn't get away with killing two people and taking their stuff without wolves chewing on me. I wish there was an unlock spell in this game like there was in Oblivion. Not that I really, like, need it for anything, mind you. I just kind of, like, wish there was a magical way to open it. Actually, it's certainly strange that in this game where they always have, like, wow, a lot of wolves in it. Is there another one over there? Or is it something else? Another one. Alright. Anyway, Shrek is odd. Like, in this series, they always have, like, sets of three things. Like, a mage thing, a warrior thing, and a thief thing. For any kind of problem or whatever. And Shrek is obvious. You could have, like, a skill to pick locks, a skill for, you know, or a spell to open locks, and, like, a skill to smash things open with, like, your axe or whatever. I don't know why they don't do that. I don't know if it really adds things that much to the game, but they always seem to like having an option for every type of character among those three, so... Some kind of hostile here. Oh, Imperial's escorting a prisoner, huh? Well, I'll leave them to their geographically strangely placed business. And look for the entrance. So, nonsensically, you get to the Dawn Guard not by going through like their actual valley here that leads up to the fortress, but going to this cave which somehow inexplicably leads you there and it doesn't make any sense at all. It used to be the quest marker did not direct you there properly either, so uh, you get very badly lost. So here's their first you know, unique Dawn Guard location. And Dawnguard adds many very pretty locations to the game. Lots of, you know, beautiful, new, fun environments to explore. But they're often just kind of, like, pointlessly huge and remote. And so it's just often tedious getting to them and getting through them. You'll see what I mean before the end of this. Oh, hey there. You here to join the Dawnguard, too? Truth is, uh, I'm a little nervous. I've never done anything like this before. I hope you don't mind if I walk up with you. Hey, uh, don't tell Isran I was afraid to meet him by myself. Not the best first impression for a new vampire hunter, I guess? Certainly like me a good first impression here. Half melted waterfalls. I saw some of those when I was hiking in the Grand Tetons once or twice. Very pretty. There's Fort Dawnguards. Again, I think it's cool in its appearance and it looks neat. But it's pointlessly huge. You probably killed lots of vampires, huh? I'm sure Isran will sign you right up. I'm not sure he'll take me. I hope so. I don't look forward to working with a wuss like you. So, we shall see about that. That be it. Fort Dawn Guard. Wow. Bigger than I expected. Pointlessly big. 
If you could actually do something with it when it was like, you know, your fort and whatnot, and you were in the Dongrith, that'd be cool, but you really, it doesn't serve any kind of purpose. When you're in the Dongrith, you don't like fight like any real battles or anything like that. When you're in the Vampires, I guess you fight one, but not really an important one. It's like after the quest is basically over with, so... Waste of a dramatic pool location here. Here you see a person practicing with a crossbow for the first time. Only accessible for Dawnguard expansion, and only really viable if you are in the Dawnguard, because nobody else will sell you any bolts or anything like that. And you can't craft them yourself, except I think at one smith here for no good reason. It's really pointless and obnoxious that they did that. You there. The Dawnguard is this guy usually comes out and finds you. I don't know how he did it. vampire menace. What do you say? Ha! Huh. Isran's going to like you. He's up the hill in the fort. Yeah, usually this guy will come out and find you some kind of horrible But I've been traveling around too much for him to do that, I guess. I heard what's going on. The vampires, the dawn, all of them. Let me to help just you. check. Okay, these guys are not vampires, at least. You never know. In Oblivion, the totally incompetent Order of the Virtuous Blood had a vampire as their leader without even knowing it. And they were tricked into thinking that some non-vampire member was a vampire. So... I'll tell you, the only thing more surprising than hearing from Isran after all these years was hearing that he wanted my help. I immediately realized things must be pretty bad. Looks like I was right. Kinda, but not really. I have. There was a time years ago when we were both members of the Vigilance, and both equally dissatisfied with them. Their hearts are in the right place, of course. But Isran and I were never comfortable. We left together, but that partnership didn't last very long. I didn't agree with some of his methods. Never really followed up on. Go on inside. A He's lot of the Dunkirk members have like pretty interesting sounding backgrounds that you just never hear anything about beyond like knowing they exist. Kind of a waste there. Why are you here, Tony? The vigilance and I were finished with each other a long time ago. He of course means the vigilance you of Senna, who we've seen so many times. The vigilance are under attack everywhere. This is the part where they suddenly go from totally competent vampire and data hunters to being like a joke somehow. Come running to safety with the Dawn Guard, is that it? I remember Keeper Carset telling me repeatedly that Fort Dawn Guard is a crumbling ruin, not worth the expense and manpower to repair. I can't disagree with that. Now that you've stirred up the vampires against you, you come begging for my protection. This seemed really inconvenient. Isra, Carset is dead. The Hall of the Vigilance. He's running such a jerk. It's kind of annoying. Dead. You were right, we were wrong. Isn't that enough for you? Yes, yeah, well. I never wanted any of this. I do like this line here. But but man, this is a you. long, boring talking I, uh, scene. Sorry, you know. He's not like awful and unacceptable, but he is noxious. And alive. So that's nice. So who are you? What do you want? You heard right. I'm glad words finally starting to get around. But that means it won't be long before the vampires start to take notice as well. I need someone out in the field taking the fight to the damn vampires. While we're getting the fort back in shape. Tolan was telling me about some cave the Vigilants were poking around in. Seemed to think it was related to these recent vampire attacks. Well, that gets Shelfie's interest. Tolan, tell him about... Although up until now I didn't care too much about hollow. vampires. His like Brother mutton sure chop mustache is artifact of just an atrocity. We didn't listen to him any more than we did Isran. He was at the hall. And that's where the hall is it's ruined if you go there after level ten or so. Or after hearing about the dumb guy. Go see what the vampires were looking for in this dim hollow crypt. With any luck, they'll still be there. Here, you should take a crossbow. Good for taking out those fiends before they it's get It's really close. not actually useful for them. Feel free to the fort and take what you need. There isn't much yet, but you're welcome to anything you can use. I'll meet you at Dim Hollow. It's the least I can do to avenge my fallen comrades. Tolan, I don't think that's a good idea. You vigilants were never trained I know before. what you think of us. You think we're soft, that we're cowards. You think our deaths proved our weakness? Stendar granted you do not have to face the same test and be found wanting. I'm going to Dim Hollow Crypt. 
Perhaps I can be of some small assistance to you. You then, boy. Yeah, we'll see. I don't think I want to go with somebody so What's loud and determined to prove himself. It uh, seems kind I'm of productive. A, uh, my name is Agmir, sir. There's a few useful odds and ends to take around here. Not too many that are really worth bothering with. There'll be good things here later on. Yes, sir. Randomized food, I think, in most of these. I already have plenty of that. He doesn't use this cooking pot, though. Nice. Alright. Some of these Donker guys really would be interesting characters if they got more about them. But most of them don't have any kind of, you know, quest related thing or anything cool like that. Let's see how you shoot. This, if you want to use a crossbow, uh, which you shouldn't, they're really quite disappointing. Best thing for killing vampires. Just take a few shots at those crates over there. If you want to use one of those, this is your best opportunity. This is the only time that you're going to be shooting these things at a target where you just collect the bolts endlessly. That's it. So if you want to be using crossbow, this is your one chance to get a large number of bolts. You will never have one again. You can never buy them in bulk. You can never really craft them effectively. So I had to do a bunch of searching and pick up some junk to sell later, but I found where the Amulet of Talos is. I'm gonna cut out those several minutes of me just kind of looking around in every nook and cranny, picking random stuff up till I found it. There's several different entrances to the rooftop, and they're all different sections that can't actually be uh, reached from each other. But I think it's one of these two staircases up near the entrance that takes you to the right location, where they just have an Amulet of Talos lying around free for the taking. One of very few ones that are guaranteed and available. I think this is an ale too. Nice. Alright. Kjolti is not tired at all and doesn't need to sleep much. I will spare you the nuisance of watching me go back through Dayspring Canyon where there's no enemies. Kind of a cute woolly cow there. So. Nobody knows Kjolti came this way. Everybody in Riften saw him leave town. Everybody in the Dawn Guard knows, of course, they went to the Dawn Guard and went for Din Hollow Crypt from there. So. He just creeps down to the edge of the water here, takes off all his clothes and puts them in a bag so they don't get wet, and then of course, muffles himself. He should go to creep into the city completely undetected with nobody knowing he'd be coming at all. I like their viking ships with all the shields along them, by the way. He, of course, you know, grew up in Daggerfall, which is on a small peninsula, and spent a lot of time in the Imperial City, too, so he certainly knows his way around the water. Come up for air under these stairs here, nobody can see him. Then... creep around this way. Come up for air there. Then... get himself a head start, and... need to have a uh, running start to get up there, it's kind of silly the way it looks, but it's climbing up. Great. One person right above me. Hoping they weren't listening carefully. Well, having a naked man strutting around here would attract the wrong kind of attention. So, on with those. Just looks like an ordinary, wealthy gentleman along the docks. And here is the Blackbriar Meadery. Which should at this time be empty. Except for some sleeping workers, perhaps. I can creep by them. The Black Rare Meadery, by the way, is uh, stuff full of Black Rare Meadery, you might expect, which is actually quite valuable. And if you get in the uh, owner's good graces, or not the owner, but the uh, manager's good graces, he'll let you take any number of bottles there once you're friendly with him, so you can make a vast amount of money that way. But right now, I don't want to leave any kind of evidence that I came through this way. So out I go. Creeping around town would attract the wrong kind of attention. I will simply walk. After all, everybody knows that Hjalti is not here, and he's not dressed the same way. Over the bridge. He is nervous going past the keep here. Then, right on in. Here he'd better creep along. Find out where that fiend Greylod sleeps. Children all in beds there. Somebody sleeping that way. Ah, one last one back there. Well, through I go. 
There she is. Well. Perhaps a murder weapon that will melt away and leave very little evidence. And then he will run on out before anybody can recognize him because there's nobody going undetected there. You were scripted for the kids to notice, but they won't recognize him hustling by in the dark. That guard doesn't know anything is up just yet. So he simply walks away. And I wish I could remember where the... Where the Shrine to Talus around here is. There is one. Back through he goes. I would imagine he would have unlocked this door from the other side, but whatever. The hours of this locked are bizarre and completely random, too. So. Through I go. Yeah, it was weird because it had been unlocked from the other side, but they still made me unlock it again. Uh, tempting, but I don't want to leave any evidence whatsoever that anybody came through here. Down I go. Just need to slip into the water and Kelty will have made a clean getaway. Of course, he'll make it also a fast getaway just in case it was less clean than he thought. That those children woke up is concerning to him. But... Down he slips. Throws off again. Into the waves. And that's where we'll end it for tonight. Obviously, Relod counts as a monster, not a human. Have a great day, everyone.